there, I'm Sarah Miga, your go-to real estate expert and associate broker of Miga Homes with Keller Williams. If you're new here and interested in all things real estate, be sure to hit the subscribe button by clicking that little icon in the bottom right-hand corner of the video. I publish videos on a new real estate topic every week and you don't wanna miss anything. So let's get started on today's topic, five things to think about when buying a condo. Consideration one, a homeowners association, also known as an HOA, responsibilities and their fees. Every condo complex is a little bit different in terms of what the HOA covers and how much they charge. You'll definitely want to know what you're responsible for versus what the HOA is supposed to maintain. Some common items to inquire about are outside landscaping, exterior maintenance like gutter, siding, and roof, water, trash, and snow removal, decks or patios, windows and door walls, plumbing or electrical issues. In addition, are there any common buildings or spaces included in that fee, like a clubhouse, gym, tennis court, pool, or playground? It is also important to read in the bylaws what the policy is for special assessments, road maintenance, and how often and how much they can raise the dues by annually. Number two, is the HOA responsive? Do they maintain common errors appropriately? And are there reserve funds? Beyond what is covered on paper, it is really important to know whether or not the HOA is being managed properly and living up to their promises. If it says the HOA is responsible for landscaping and you notice deferred maintenance in everyone's yard, or it says that they take care of staining the deck and none of the decks are stained, then you may want to ask around about whether the HOA is actually doing what it's supposed to do. In addition, you'll want to review the most recent financial statement to make sure that they have enough money in reserve to cover any big or upcoming expenses like roof replacements, roads, driver repairs, or anything else that may need to get done. If there's not enough money in reserve, then they may charge an assessment to take care of these things. Number three, are there any restrictions I need to know about? Most people struggle with the idea of moving from a home where you have a lot of control over how your home looks, how you use your space, and how many pets you can have. If you're a dog lover, you will definitely want to read the bylaws of any condo complex because many of them have a quantity, breed, or weight restriction for pets within the complex. In addition, if you want to add a deck onto the backyard, plant a garden in the front of your house, or intend to remodel, you want to make sure you have the right to do all of those things without the HOA stopping you. Finally, if you're looking in a 55 and up or a 60 plus community, there can be even more strict rules around who can visit or stay the night, whether you can have guests park within the subdivision and more. So make sure you're fully reading through all the documentation before proceeding to the closing table. Number four, is the condo warrantable? This question only really applies to those that are looking to get financing for a condo and have less than 20% down. If a condo is under construction and has not reached a certain capacity of ownership or has not achieved enough money in reserve, then you may have restrictions as to the type of loans and down payment options that you can use for that complex. This may result in using a portfolio loan product, which may have higher interest rates or cost more than a warrantable condo. Number five, can I rent out the unit if I ever wanted to? This is an important one to consider because if you ever find yourself in a situation where you cannot sell the home and need some income, there are often restrictions as to whether the units can be rented in a condo. Depending on the complex, you may not be allowed to rent it out at all, or if you can, there may be guidelines as to how many units in a complex can have renters, and the renters may even have to apply for approval or membership with the community. If you think there's ever a chance that you may want to rent out your condo, then make sure that you've considered this before moving forward. I hope you've learned something new today and can take something back with you as you continue to think about condo ownership or downsizing in general. As always, if you think you may want to make a move in the next year or you might want to downsize, give me a call and set up a consultation today as I create custom moving plans for all of my clients up to a year in advance. In addition, I work with a variety of contractors who can help with things like decluttering, estate sales, paint, carpet, handyman work, moving, and more. Plus, if I'm not able to personally assist you, don't worry. I'm part of a global real estate company and can find you a similarly qualified agent anywhere in the world. In fact, if you haven't yet had a chance, please check out another one of my videos on why you should get a realtor referral for an agent when relocating. That will teach you all about how realtor to realtor referrals work and what to expect when you ask me for one. Be sure to subscribe to my channel today and tune in to next week's question, should I consider buying in a 55 and up or a 60 plus community? 
You can also check out my other series on relocation, selling a home, buying and selling simultaneously, buying a home for the first time, new construction, and more. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.